Hello everyone, so here we are, we're back on this roof again, day two, part two, whatever you want to call it. We're still waiting for some bits and bobs to come, um, the hips mainly. Um, we ran into problems and you can check that video out I did here, which is the first day on this job. So what we're going to do is uh, carry on putting in as much as we can. We've got the okay that these trusses that had the wrong top cord in would be sufficient. So we've braced this main bit of roofing up and now what I'm coming to do is set these monos in. So what I've done, again, we're waiting for the hips, like I said, and um, we've I've marked out this girder here. We have a central point obviously there. Um, and then what we have here is this a mono. Well, basically the mono is a, is a common raft or a crown. I don't want, different people call it different things, but the raft accord on these monos is exactly the same length as the raft accord on these common trusses. Now, because of the way that I set it out, uh, basically my last common truss in the main run of the roof sits over the center line. So basically we have to cut off half the thickness of the raft of material. We have to cut off this end one, otherwise they won't hit the same point. So I'm just gonna cut that off now and then we can get these three in here. Um, and maybe all we can do this end and then I'll go and do the same on the other end. But at least we can start putting some stuff up. I've got to, uh, my son has come to help me today, which is going to be great. So there might be, um, there might be more of me actually being filmed rather than film myself. But anyway, let's get this up. Lovely. Right, so there you go, we've got that, that mono in and what that's basically done is sort of squared up the end. Uh, it's gone in quite nicely actually. So uh, I cut that uh, half the thickness of the main truss material, I cut off the end of this mono and that's fitted in there. Uh, I'll just zoom up there, look, that's fitted in there, an absolute treat. So we've got a nice intersection between the end roof and the main run of the roof. Um, well, we'll zoom back. So there's not a lot more I can do really. I can't put any more of these monos in because obviously they clash with the flying, uh, the flying rafters on those other uh, trusses so um, I think what we'll do is just do the same that we've done this end on the other end uh, and hope that the hip material turns up or at least um, even if I knew what the hip material was um, I could set a string up and I could cut because uh, these hips are going to come down here I could cut uh, cut those rafters off up there and maybe maybe I'll do that it just depends so we're going to be in trouble today if stuff doesn't turn up soon so but anyway let's get on the other end so we just popped that end in as well so we've done pretty much as all we can do until these uh hip boards come which I've told is going to be uh not till tomorrow so um bit of a pain and we've also had another little bit of a problem here which we have to get over um it's, it might be able to show it down here but these bottom cords of these trusses have got uh quite a bad deflection about 15 mil so what I've had to do there um, is I've actually had to uh, zoom that in there you see I've had to pack this mono up uh, that cord of that mono uh, that cord of that mono there is exactly level but obviously because there's a massive deflection in the bottom of this truss um, the truss is going to have to hang down low so we'll have to do some counterbanding or something when we come to tack the ceiling but I've had to put that in uh, that's got to go in level obviously because then that dictates the pitch of the top of the rafter cord which obviously as you can see up there uh, as you can see up there meets perfectly so uh, yeah there's a, a lot of things have got to be right in a roof like this and when a few bits and bobs aren't it can soon start throwing stuff out so uh, the only thing I can do now um, fortunately slash unfortunately is this hip end here so we've got all the materials we need for this there's no trusses it's pure hand cut hip end so Let's see how we get on with that. So we're just gonna start this hip. I know I've sh maybe shown this before, but just for refresher, um, obviously the first thing I'm gonna do is put a mark on the true hip corner, and I'm gonna cut that off to take our uh, hip timber. So basically it's pretty simple. I have done this before. 45 degrees through there like that. And then half the hip material, which is we're using 35 mil in this instance. So that's, it's 17 and a half mil one side and obviously 35 the other. And I'll just join those lines up. And then all we've got is this, uh, this through here is what we cut off. And that then 
is where the seat cut, uh, the, the plum cut of our hip bird's mouth will sit. So, Lovely, excellent. Excellent. So, so you just see, I just put these joists in first because what that'll give us is something to stand on when we put the, uh, the rest of the rafters and the hips in. So let's crack on with those. That top cut done look. It's the moment of truth, let's see if that hip goes in, shall we? Here we go. Might need might yeah. take. Sorry to take it. Bit, so I got it, don't worry. Yeah. It, it might be a bit long. Let's have a look there. It's not gonna hit the brickwork, that's good. So it's we're close, let's have a look here. What do we need? I'd say. That's a bit long. That's come up a bit long, so probably want to take, I don't know, five or so mil off that. Like I said, sometimes they're going first time, but better to be on the long side than the, than the short side, because we can always take some off, but we can't stick any on. So let's just adjust that, and then we'll uh, hopefully that'll go in sweet. Don't go mad. Probably just going to go about five mil, because it can seem a lot more down here, but when it drops slightly, it doesn't have to have much off it to make it drop, so. And we'll just, just recut that. Just take that off that side. Should find that should drop that in nice. Okay. Angle that saw over.
one. These are cut it by hand. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens this time, shall we? So happy with that. Just that five mil has made that sit in there lovely. So that's one down. Uh, that's one down, one more to go. So I'll just put a little pin in here, just to hold that. Excellent. And then I'll bung a couple of nails in at the top as well. So now I'll just put a couple of pins in the top here. Splash, splash. Happy with that. Put one through there. Maybe something like that. Oh, come on. Struggling to reach. There. So that. Have a quick look here. He's got a lovely, nice cut in there. So uh, now I could just do the same with the other one. Love it, love it when the hips come in like that. Everything's in a beautiful plane. So happy days. So I think I mentioned in a previous video that some of this wood wasn't very good and um, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, we've got this lovely um, hip cut at the top. Obviously that we know that's dead upright, that uh, hip rafter. But look, as we come down, look. Oh, I moved that. But yeah, uh, you know, uh, it's nice and upright at the top there, but as we come down, look, look at the twist on that. Absolutely shocking. So, got to try and pull that out somehow. Look, we've got a massive, massive gap under here. So, you know, it is a natural product, timbers, I suppose. But as I've said it many times now, it seems to be getting worse and worse. We've got all that running, and as you'll see, uh, the timbers aren't big enough uh, to get a bird's mouth in. So basically all I've done is I've run the ceiling joists all the way through. Um, I did leave this a bit longer, that gave me something to cut my timber on. Um, I've left these ceiling joists right through, and then all I'm gonna do is pull these rafters up. I've put a line in from each hip, because I know that's right, and I've put a small, a little nail under the line, so we're just holding it off. So all I need to do now uh, is, I'll put some small nails in the gun. All I need to do now, if you look here, I just lift, I just lift this um, rafter up until it's just shy of the line, not touching the line, and then I can nail it. So let's do that. I tell you what, I tell you what, I tell you what. Because um, all this stuff's twisted, what I'm going to do. If you look here, look, I'm trying to sort of clamp it and nail it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly get a clamp and clamp that and then nail it. Right. So I'll just put a clamp on it, look, and that's going to. You come in here a bit more, you can see. Just bring it up, look. And that just means that when we nail it, we're not trying to clamp it at the same time. Boom! 
brilliant. And obviously because we've left the tiny gap there, we know we're not going to be pushing the line up for the next one. Oh, there we go. Just pull that one up there, look. Tiny gap. Put some nails in it. Already done the centre one, come this way. Just here, look, you see, just lift that up, lift it up to the line. So normally this would have a bird's mouth on, but it's, it has made it quite, it does make it quite uh, quick and easy doing it like this. And then this last one on this one. Look at that. Superb. So, there you go. That's that ending. You've noticed that we're a couple of joists missing out of here. And that's mainly because um, I didn't want to put them in because I knew it would interfere with this hip. So I'm just going to infill this. It might not quite be on the 600 centers, but I'll just infill this, get these last jacks in. Uh, yeah, so all I've got to do now is just run a, run a line, the same as what I've done here, run a line down this end, run a line down that end, pull those rafters up, and uh, yeah, nearly get in there. So great, it's looking good. So got a lovely line on my hips there, always get quite a bit of satisfaction out of that. Look, running up there, lovely straight hip, all the cuts are nice. Let's just jump up here. This is I get the satisfaction I get from doing these is immense. Um, look, we've got this lovely union up here. Look, and we've got this sort of end common or king common, whatever you want to call it. I need to just punch these nails in a bit more, I couldn't get my hammer all the way in, but look, this lovely sort of union where they all come together and lovely in the right plane. So yeah, get a a lot of satisfaction out of roofing, even though it's all covered up and overseen. <laughs> so there you go, that's that hip done in. I hope you managed to see that on the time lapse there. Uh, it's about the only thing we had to do on this uh, job now because we're waiting for stuff. So uh, it's all in, really, really happy. Fairly easy, like I said, because there's no bird's mouth. We just um, put the ceiling joist through, put a line in, and pull the rafters up to the the jack rafters up to the seat to the uh, line. So really, really easy. Uh, confession time, um, very easily done because I've got lots of other things I'm thinking about. Um, I put some. Uh, nailed the ceiling joist into the wrong side of the line. I marked the wrong side of the line. So um, what I basically did is just uh, knocked a bit of space between the the two joists, and then I just uh, nipped through the nails with my um, hacksaw. It, it's really quick and easy, and actually it's, it saves a lot, a lot. It's a lot less aggro than trying to pull all the nails out. So um, yeah, so it's it's everyone makes mistakes. Uh, and it's just how quickly you can get over them. I got over these really quickly, uh, set my saw, nipped all the top of these uh, joists off. Um, I could have done that to start with, but to be honest, I just left them long and it gives me something to work on. So if I look down through here, look, you can see I've got a nice, get the camera right there, nice line all the way down through there, the end of the hip, and then I know that this is a quite a long run, but we can see that this, this uh, run should get that down there look at that all starting to come through really really nice with that hip and then these little trusses here then you've got those monos and then the hip on the end so um, don't think again sort of i'm not going to moan the sun's shining but that's pretty much all we can do today it's uh, what is the time i don't know three ish so we'll probably pull some timber up to finish off the day and then we're still waiting for these uh long um as i said before we're still waiting for these long six meter hips before we can start laying in this because obviously i need to put the hip in first where i can then put all the um infills in and the monos in and then we can start moving around so <clears throat> quite a nice enjoyable day today i've had my son helping me which is lovely and he's held the camera a bit so uh hope you found it interesting not too boring and haven't walked too much and we'll see you in the next one